night of September 2nd, 2018, a fire ripped through the National Museum of Brazil, destroying millions of the specimens they had cataloged there and many precious artifacts from history. The artifacts lost include some Egyptian mummies and Greco-Roman artifacts, such as frescoes from Pompeii that survived Vesuvius. Additionally, from Brazil, there's the oldest human skeleton found in the Americas, dating from nearly 12,000 years ago, making it one of the most significant finds for anthropology in the world. In the paleontology collections of the museum, there's been a great loss. Despite the idea that rocks can't burn, that doesn't mean they can't be damaged by fire. First, buildings collapse when there's fires, and so that could damage what's beneath it. Secondly, if there is enough organic material in the rock, it can burn to some degree and potentially become damaged. And finally, with so much heat coming from the fire, the rock's going to expand and contract and eventually just splinter into pieces, becoming scientifically unusable. Many good fossils were lost to science, such as Amazonosaurus, Mexicaliosaurus, and then the mammals Smilodon, Megatherium, the giant ground sloth, and Mastodon. No one was harmed in the fire, but there were scientists and researchers running into the flames to try and pull out as many specimens as they could. For example, the holotype of Irritator, famously named because it was so difficult for the scientists to prepare, was rescued from the flames. However, its relatives, Oxalia and Angiturama, were not as lucky and perished in the flames. As for the pterosaurs, the paleontologist Mark Witten mentioned on Twitter that the museum had loaned a wide number of very good pterosaur fossils, in addition to having many very good fossils of its own including many with soft tissue preservation, which is very rare. With the loss of these, the pterosaur community and research is at a substantial loss, as many of these fossils, particularly the ones from Brazil, are not only rare, but help to define what the pterosaurs were doing in the later Cretaceous, when fewer fossils of them had been found before the new sites in Brazil were uncovered. And so with that, some of the best specimens of species like Tropicnathus, Tapehara, and Anguera have been lost to science due to this fire. And so with the loss of a lot of these fossils, many of these species are now completely gone to science until we find a new one, if we find a new one. There's nothing left of them but dust and rubble, simply because there wasn't enough funding to put in a sprinkler system. To put it into context, this disaster would be like the Smithsonian or the Library of Congress burning down. This is a major devastation for the science community in Brazil. The cause of the fire is currently unknown, but there were some known issues with the electrical wiring that seemed likely to be the cause. And the museum had specifically written to the local government for funding to try and input a fire suppression system, likely sprinklers, to try and prevent exactly this from happening. There's something fundamentally wrong about the number of cuts that were happening to the funding for the museum. And again, we need to make sure that this doesn't happen here or in any other museums around the world, as there's so much value in the museums for science and for education that we cannot risk what makes humanity human, which is education and knowledge. One Brazilian reporter has mentioned that the cost of upkeep for the museum was less than that of a Supreme Court judge in Brazil, and that the museum hadn't received this minimal amount of funding since 2014, which is to say that very directly, this disaster was caused by a lack of funding by the Brazilian government. The funding changes that would have been made to have the museum be funded to the same extent as a Brazilian Supreme Court justice would have been an increase from 84,000 US dollars to about 120,000 US dollars. However, in 2013, the museum's funding was 130,000 US dollars. And so the cuts that they experienced after 2014 directly led to the fire and how badly and quickly it was able to spread across the museum, damaging so many of the over 20 million artifacts that were in the museum. As for Brazil itself, there's been a lot of outrage at this, as the government has already been seen as somewhat corrupt, with widespread protests occurring during the 2014 World Cup and the 2016 Olympics, when the government was spending money on these events rather than on the museums or the people of the country. And so this only goes to exacerbate the issue that people are having with the government of Brazil and the lack of funds that are occurring 
in the public sector for Brazil. Despite multiple private companies and banks saying that they will come forward and help rebuild the museum, there's been calls for the government itself to step up and do it themselves, as they haven't been as much of a help to the museums and to the people as Brazilians may have wanted. Overall, the entire situation just highlights the need for well-funded museums so that we don't have this kind of loss of knowledge occur in the future. And with so many cuts happening around the world, it's really important that we get out and donate, but also let our representatives know that we care about the sciences and the museums. All museums. Not just the natural history ones, despite how much I talk about them. There's plenty of knowledge to be gained from museums and the museum system, and we need to protect it. As for helping the museum itself, there will be a link to an email down below where you can send any photos that you've taken of the museum if you've been there so that they can try and help rebuild what they used to have. Additionally, if there's anything new that shows up for donations, I will put that down there as well, but as it is such a recent event, there isn't that much information available on it right now.